Okay guys, today what we're gonna be doing, we are going to build a mobile out of triangles. And what we want for this mobile is for all of these triangles to be perfectly parallel to the ground. So how we're going to do that, we need to find the point of balance for each triangle. Now I say each triangle, you're gonna have at least seven different triangles on your mobile. So you must do this process about seven times, which it's a good learning experience. So here we go. The first thing that we need to do, we need to construct the midpoint of each side. So here I have my ruler and I'm going to be using the centimeter side because centimeters um, are a lot smaller than inches. So that right there makes it a little bit more accurate in our measuring and also because it's a lot easier to divide um, divide a tenths of a centimeter than it is sixteenths of an inch because we're gonna have to end up um, dividing each of these numbers in half so that we can find the midpoint so here we go our first side well my first side is 16.6 .6 centimeters long. So to find the midpoint of that, 16.6 .6 divided by two is 8.3. So I'm gonna take my marker and go here to eight, one, two, three little ticks. And I'm going to put my midpoint right there. I'm gonna make that big so you can see it. There you go. Then we do the same thing for the other three sides, or I'm sorry, the other two sides, only three sides on a triangle, my bad. So this side here is 13.2 centimeters. So 13.2 divided by two is going to be um, 6.6 .6 centimeters. So we go here to six, six and a half, 6.6. .6. There we go, make a little mark. Then the last side that I have is 10.2 centimeters long. So 10.2 divided by two is 5.1. So just the first tick after five. So there we go, step one is complete. We have all of the midpoints of the triangle. Our second step then is to construct the medians. And what a median is, it goes from this midpoint here to the opposite vertex. From this midpoint here to the opposite vertex. From that midpoint right there to the opposite vertex. So we're gonna make our three segments here. So there we go, line this up. We got the midpoint, we got the vertex. Scooch it so we can draw. And there we go. That is median number one. Do it again. Whoopsie. From this midpoint right here, across the way. And that's gonna be our next median. And lastly, this midpoint here to the opposite vertex. There we go. Oh boy, ruler got off there. And there we go. So we have constructed all three of our medians. So the next thing we do is locate the centroid. And the centroid is where all three of these medians meet. Now they should meet exactly at a perfect point right there in the middle. If yours don't meet at that perfect point, if there's a little triangle there in the middle, that's our margin of error. That's if we mismeasured this side or uh, divided it incorrectly 
and did not get exactly in the midpoint here. So if your three lines do not exactly meet in one point, then please go back and figure out where um, you may have messed up and fix it so that it is that perfect center. The reason for that is that we need to check that to make sure that that is our balancing point. So what we're going to do, we're going to put our finger right on that point and flip the triangle over. And that should balance perfectly parallel to the table or the floor or whatever surface you're working on. If that is true, then you have successfully found the centroid. And the centroid is the balancing point. So the next thing we're going to do is actually construct our uh, mobile. So what we're going to do here, I have a box cutter. It's got a nice sharp point on it. And I'm going to put that directly on the centroid. And I'm going to kind of rotate it so that whenever I want to get my thread in there, whenever I want to get my yarn in there, it's going to have a nice little hole to go in. So there I've made a tiny little hole. And now I'm going to take my yarn needle, and a yarn needle is uh, pretty, pretty thick and uh, kind of dull at the end, so it would not have cut through the this corrugated cardboard all by itself. So I'm going to take that and push it through. Yeah. yeah. There we go. And thread the yarn through. And the idea here is that I can attach this in such a way, like make a big fat knot down here, so that it acts like my finger, where it's going to be perfectly balanced there. And of course the thread's in the way, so that's not working out too good. So I'm going to make a big fat knot with this yarn, and it just needs to be bigger than the hole that the uh, box cutter made. There we go, three times around should do it. And test. And there it is, perfectly parallel to the table. And this camera's not at the right angle for you to see, but it's um, nice parallel to the table. Anyway, so now uh, let's make this a little bit neater. So I'm going to snip off the end of the string here. And I'm going to cut off a decent length of yarn. So now I have this uh, little dangly piece. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a wire coat hanger. And my husband was nice enough to make this into a nice circle for me. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach this triangle with this yarn just by tying it on. And I think I'll tie it right here. So whenever I pick up this um, this coat hanger, there it is. It's hanging. And I'll show you the finished product here in a minute. I think I'm going to go through um, the steps to make this triangle again with you just one more time. So here we go. Um, now remember guys, I like things pretty, so I have made this beautiful triangle um, out of cardboard and I covered it with uh, Christmas wrapping paper. So I'm going to get the ugly side, the one with the tape on it, and we're going to make another perfectly balanced triangle. Step one, again, let's construct the midpoints. So, sorry, wrong side, there we go. This triangle side length is 18 centimeters, 18 centimeters, and 18 divided by two is nine. So right here at nine, I'm gonna make me a little mark. Then 
the other two sides. This side length over here is 14.6. 14.6 divided by 2 is 7.3. So get over here to 7. 1, 2, 3. Make a little mark right there. Make a little mark. And do it again for the third and final side. So there we go. From end to end, this is 14.2 centimeters. So 14.2 divided by 2 is 7.1. Go to 7.1, make a little mark. All right. That is step one. We have all of our midpoints. Step two, we're going to construct the medians. Again, that's from each midpoint to its opposite vertex, the opposite corner there. So here we go. Line up the ruler and make the median. There we go. Ta-da. Do it again from this one to the opposite corner. And there we go. Draw the line. There we are. And the third. So there we go. Now, our centroid is right there where these three lines meet. And that is a nice, perfect single point. There is no uh, gap there. So I'm going to take my box cutter. You can take a, a pair of scissors. You can take a sewing needle. Whatever you have handy to make your point there. So, I've got my little uh, divot in there, so I'm going to take my yarn needle here, and you can use a sewing needle on this, or you can just uh, thread it by putting it through the cardboard, if you have a, you know, a better box cutter than mine. Um, and I'm going to push through, get the yarn to go all the way through there. All right. Now, guys, uh, just a prettiness note here. The side that we are going to be able to see is the bottom side. So where we want the prettiness is going to be the side that we put the knot on. So make your big fat knot. And of course, if you don't want to knot it, you can um, put a piece of tape or uh, staple the yarn down. The only thing there is that that kind of throws off your centroid a little bit. I find this to be um, the best method for uh, balancing. So there we go. Nice and level. So I'm going to take this and snip off the end. Look at that, you can hardly see where the yarn is. Man, I got good tasting colors, don't I? Just kidding. Anyway, so take it, take the end of your string, and knot it onto your wire coat hanger. And do this with seven triangles. Now, so far I've done three of them. Uh, I've only done two on the video, so if you're looking for the third one, um, I did one earlier as practice. So I have three triangles here. Remember, from you, I want seven different sized triangles. So um, please complete the questions at the end of this 
video and then be sure to have this done and turned into me by Monday. I'm going to give you guys over the weekend to, uh, to finish up and make it as pretty as you possibly can. Thank you and have a nice day.